Welcome to Grow It, Cook It, Eat It. Coley and I again want to thank you so much for the warm response that uh, you've given us for this series. In this series we're going to talk about summer squash. This is a white scallop squash. I'm going to show you how to grow it, but my focus on growing is really going to be on pest management. She's going to show you how to use it in your kitchen and she's not going to just talk about zucchini bread. What we hope is you take something you've grown, something you've cooked, and you get to share it with family and friends. And like I said, this is a white scallop squash. Today's August 6th. So all the video footage you're going to see has really been shot over the last three weeks. This plant's growing up a cage, up a post, back down, across the bench, and this is all patty pan or white scallop squash. You can pick it at different sizes that I picked just before shooting this intro. This is my third or fourth harvest. I haven't had any of my plants uh, die off from the vine borer, so what I'm going to really focus on is how do you treat your plants to really keep the vine borers, cucumber beetles, and stink bugs off of them. Because there's nothing worse than growing something to size, it starts to produce, and then something kills it off. I'm also going to talk about pollination and why the fruit turns brown, so let's get started with that. The first thing I want to talk about is why do some of your zucchinis and squash turn brown? And the reason being, really, it's mostly a pollination issue. I'm going to show you another example in a second, but if you look in here, that is a female flower. You can see the little round zucchini. These are round zucchini and a flower. So that's a female flower. The one next to it doesn't have the zucchini, just a straight stalk and a flower. So that's male, female. In order for this not to happen, this is a round zucchini that rotted off. This one is dying off. You can just break that off. There's another one here that dried and shriveled. All of those aren't turning brown because of a disease or a pest, they simply didn't get pollinated. So when your zucchini first start, sometimes the male and female flowers are out of sync. Once they start growing, you can see a female flower there, a male flower there. They're all going to start opening at the same time. So when the male flower opens, a bee will come or a pollinator will land on the male flower, land on the female flower. If pollination works, you'll start getting your zucchini and squash. So again, if your squash tips are browning out, or your zucchini, even cucumbers, are browning out. That's not something to worry about. This is purely, again, a pollination issue. And you can see over here a squash. This has been pollinated. It's growing. It's solid. When you squeeze it, it's not soft. That's going to grow into a mature uh, straight neck yellow squash. Before I talk a little bit more about pollination, here are a couple that I picked. You want to pick these in about the 6 to 8 inch range. The skin is really soft at this point. You can slice it up, almost eat them um, plain if you wanted to. If you let them get to the 8, 10, 12 inch range, the skin gets a little bit tougher, but you can certainly let them grow larger if you want. And that's another one that was picked at about 6 and a half inches. Perfect size for picking your squash and zucchini. Male flower right here. You can see no squash under there. And right in here, that's a female flower. Female has the baby squash beneath it. If the insect comes and lands in an open male flower and then comes and pollinates the squash, the female flower, you're going to have a squash that starts growing in size. If not, it's going to brown out just like this. And I don't want you to worry about that. Just remove the brown tip squash. Don't panic. Just give it time and your plants will do perfectly fine. I want to talk about trellising next. You just saw the first uh, clip had a round zucchini that was growing on the ground, and this one's actually in a cage. But let me talk about that. That's my green zucchini plant. That variety is actually uh, called dark green. It's growing in a tomato cage, which just helped, helped it kind of develop so the leaves stay up off the ground. What I want to show you is how fast the zucchini can grow. Two or three days ago, the large zucchini there was that size. So once they start coming, you really have to check every day because it's not unusual for them to really double or triple in size, especially after a rain. The zucchini this size is perfect for just cutting up and using raw. The skin is really soft. As it starts getting bigger, this is really good for zucchini bread. If you let it get a little bit bigger, you can cut it. You can make zucchini parmesan. But I just wanted to show you some of the green zucchini. Here's another very popular summer squash, and this is the yellow straight neck. These are all going to get harvested today. At about six or eight inches, the skin's edible. You can cut this up and use it in whatever kind of prep 
that you really want. What I wanted to show you is today's the 30th, so throughout this video, which was shot over a three, four week period, you're going to see a part where I'm talking about male and female pl uh, flowers and pollination issues where the fruit browns out. That was shot down here on this plant. Over a couple week period, it's growing extremely well, working its way up the cage, up the stake, you know, so that I'm getting its third harvest really out of there, and it's still growing. Trellising your squash and zucchini up cages is a great way to really manage disease and pests. There's one more summer squash I want to show you. There are many varieties of winter squash, and maybe that will be a subject of a future Grow It, Cook It, Eat It series. These are the white scallop squash. They also come in yellow. Sometimes they're called patty pan squash. And you can see another squash bug right there. Today's Saturday the 23rd, and I'm shooting the squash video over several weeks period. White scallop squash, these have been around, or at least actually went on record in the 1500s from Native Americans. They're delicious. You want to harvest these at about two or three inches. You can see one that's really large. That's going to go into stew. The smaller one, better to stir fry. And right here, you can even pick them when they're this size. That's about the size where they're really, really tender and you can use them for all kinds of preparations. So for growing your squash and zucchini, and in the sake of trying to keep this video short, there's just so much information I want to talk about. A couple of things. When you're preparing the soil, if you're planting them in containers like those, or right back there is my zucchini growing in the ground, just put in a lot of compost, manure, however you want to do it, two scoops, two shovelfuls, three shovelfuls. If you don't have compost, buy compost manure in bags, put in a half a bag. Just really put in a lot of organic matter for the plants. If you're using organic fertilizer or chemical fertilizer, two or three scoops as directed into the planting hole and just mix it in really, really well. You're going to want to feed these about every two weeks with a liquid fertilizer and you can check out my other videos for that. This is a massive plant over here. That's my white scallop squash. It's growing up a post. It really makes it easy to get in and look for disease. Spraying is much more easily done. You can just get in here, spray it down, and again spraying you want to use whatever deterrent you want to put in your sprayer and do it every 10 to 14 days. And these are squash bugs. I'm going to take a stab and say that they're mating. But this is what you want to keep off of your squash and zucchini. And this is exactly what they Here's look a clump like. of squash bug eggs. You want to remove these from your leaves when you find them on cucumber plants, zucchini, and squash, or related. Sometimes you won't get all the eggs, and they're going to hatch. And all those things crawling on that leaf over here are squash bug eggs, babies from hatched eggs. There's a bunch of them, different stages. Now for spraying, this video is already pretty long, but it's a lot of good information. For spraying, I use a neem oil spray and spin a sad. and if you do this really every 10 to 14 days you can control them and of course I got behind but for spraying my best tip is to really stick to a routine every 10 to 14 days spray your plants and you'll be able to control or manage the insects and even if they hatch like this these are all going to be wiped out. Some more examples of the squash bug eggs and really nine times out of ten anytime you find eggs on the undersides of leaves, just remove them. Here's a pretty easy way to get rid of the squash bug eggs. Instead of removing the leaf or tearing the leaf, identify the eggs. And any eggs, really, that look like this, they're probably not good for your plants. Get some scotch tape, press the tape on. The blue painter's tape works best. And then peel the tape off, put it back on, and then slowly you'll see that the eggs come off. And that's a way to do it just so that you don't end up destroying the leaf. That right in there is the cucumber beetle. It's another pest that affects your squash, zucchini, and of course the cucumbers. Dust will take care of those extremely well, especially dusting the outer edges of the plant. Here's another pest that will attack your zucchini and squash caterpillars. Don't know where this one came from, what laid the eggs that hatched it. But I use neem oil to take care of caterpillars. So this is how I deal with the dreaded vine borer, squash bugs, cucumber beetles, all the nasty beetles that you don't want on your squash, cucumber, zucchini, and all that. It's getting uh, 
towards the end of the night, uh, end of the evening, so the shadows get a cast in here because the sun is setting. But that's when I come and I put down chemical dust. I use chemical dusts. Any dust that you use, you can see a couple different ones in there. There is uh, worry free. You still need to worry. Seven dust and eight control garden dust. All these dusts use different chemicals to kill insects. They are all indiscriminate killers, so even the worry free or whatever one you want to buy, if you use it liberally all over the place, you're going to kill everything. I want to show you how I use it. Since I'm shooting the video by hand, I'm not going to put the actual dust on, but I use seven dust. I researched it. I'm not going to tell you what poison they use because I want you to research whatever product you use in your garden and you be comfortable with it. I just want to show you how to use dusts and they're really effective and it can be done in a way that really reduces risk, risks to other insects. If you go right into here, you can see the bottom of my scallop squash on the stem, maybe six inches up, going down is seven dust. That's what I do to control the vine borers and it really works. Eight out of 10 plants survive, nine out of 10 plants survive. Just keep the dust on there and replace it after a rain. I do not wash that dust off. You'll notice there are no flowers. They've died off or they've been removed. Go ahead and just remove the flowers so your bees and pollinators aren't gonna be going by that dust. Let me show you another example with the cucumber. Right in here, not as high, but go ahead and just dust the stem. That's going to take care of vine borers, but also beetles that crawl up your plant are going to crawl through that dust and it will die off. Here's my straight neck yellow squash. And you can see the dust on there. No pollinators are going to be going on that at all. Any vine borers or the moths coming to lay the eggs, they're going to be killed off. Dust the stem. Now when you go into here and start looking around, you can see a brown zucchini or a brown squash that wasn't pollinated. There's a couple more in there. And I just took one off that you saw in the video, but these are ready. Once you prune your plants, cut off a squash, I can see a insect right back there doing something. Or a squash begins to rot on your plant, a scent goes off. So if you ever wonder how do beetles and insects find your plants, they can smell them. So if you prune, prune a tip off, remove a fruit, something rots, something gets squashed, insects are going to smell it. That's how they come and find your plant. So at night, once all the pollinators are gone, I dust the leaves. A little bit on the right side of the plant, a little bit on the left side of the plant. That will take care of wandering squash bugs, cucumber beetles, different insects. Come morning time, if you feel like your dust is too close to flowers, you don't want it there, wash it off. Wash off the outer leaves that have the dust on them and you will protect your pollinating insects and the good insects. And then I put some dust over here on this side. Now, why does this work? Because the beetles, the pests that you don't want on your plants, come out at night, they crawl all over the leaves, especially the cucumber beetles, they go everywhere. So if you just put dust down on the outer leaves, they'll crawl through it, they'll die, and then you can go ahead, wash it off in the morning, and repeat as you need to. So, I've been trying to shoot this part of the video like 12 times. Everybody's cutting your grass, every plane in the world's flying over, and now it's starting to rain. But finally, there's a good chance that your squash and zucchini have been killed off by pests and disease. But it's July 29th, you still have time to get them into the ground. Pick up a hybrid. They tend to produce much more quickly than some of your heirlooms. This plant has been in the ground um, for three weeks, maybe four weeks and it was started in a container like this for seven or ten days. So it hasn't even been the 55 days that it says on here um, for the fruit to mature and it already has a golden zucchini on there. This for instance is a max gold zucchini. You definitely have time to get it into the ground if you have 60 more days worth of warm weather. And you definitely want to have squash and zucchini. Coley has some great recipes for you. She's going to show you how to uh, make raw preparations of the squash and zucchini, how to make a puree, here comes the rain, how to use it in soup, um, how to fry it, and she's also going to talk about zoodles. 
Who doesn't love zoodles? <laughs> thanks, Gary, and thanks everyone for tuning into our third installment of Grow It, Cook It, Eat It. I'm Coley, and I'm here to show you how to cook it. Now, zucchini and squash are super prolific in the garden, and most of us gardeners have a hard time trying to figure out what to do with it all. Well, here are my five best tips for what to do with all that squash. Tip number one, try them raw. I love zucchini and squash in their raw state. They're absolutely delicious. You can take zucchini or squash and cut them into pieces and serve them with dip on a crudite platter. Or what I like to do is take a vegetable peeler and shave them into nice long strips. They create these beautiful ribbons. You can toss them with your favorite vinaigrette and serve it up ice cold. Also, zucchini doesn't just look like a cucumber, it actually makes a really good substitute for one. Take your favorite pickling recipe and swap out the cucumbers for some pieces of zucchini and squash instead, and I think you'll be very pleased with the results. Tip number two, puree it into a soup. This is a really great way to use up a whole lot of zucchini and squash all at once because it cooks down quite a bit. All you have to do is cut it up into chunks and saute it with some onion or garlic or whatever aromatics that you like. Puree it in a blender with some chicken stock, vegetable stock, or even water. Season it to your taste, and then I like to add in some fresh herbs. Basil and mint both pair really well with zucchini and squash. You can even finish it with a little bit of cream if you'd like. You can enjoy it hot or cold, and you can even freeze it for a later date. So when you get that first chilly night in the fall, you can just pull this out, heat it up, and it'll be so satisfying. Tip number three, fry it. Zucchini, like most other things in life, is delicious when it's deep fried. You can either batter it or bread it and fry it up in some oil. It's gonna get nice and crisp on the outside and the zucchini inside is gonna get really tender and juicy and delicious. I know frying might not be the healthiest option out there, but it's definitely one of the tastiest. And I also love to fry up the zucchini blossoms. If you're growing a ton of zucchini, then you definitely have a bunch of blossoms that you can choose from. You can either batter them with like a tempura batter so it's nice and light, and just fry them up as is, or I like to stuff mine with cheese. They're really great with ricotta and goat cheese, and if you put a couple fresh herbs in there too, it's gonna be even better. Tip number four. Make zoodles or zucchini noodles. You can purchase a spiralizer, which is fairly inexpensive, or use a julienne tool to make these long strips of zucchini and then toss them in a saute pan with some garlic and olive oil and a shower of fresh herbs and Parmesan cheese, or top with your favorite pasta sauce. They make a great substitution for any other kind of noodles in a dish that you're making, and they're incredibly healthy with very few calories. So that way, if you fry the zucchini one night and you have the zoodles the next night, they almost kind of balance each other out, right? And tip number five is freeze it. If you've got a bumper crop, and even if you make everything I've listed here today, you still probably have so much zucchini that you don't know what to do with. So freeze it. But first you have to blanch it. And blanching is actually gonna deactivate some of the enzymes that are present in zucchini, which is gonna cause it to get mushy and turn brown when you freeze it. So blanching at first is gonna actually prevent that. All you have to do is chop them up and then plop them into some boiling salted water for about one minute and then shock them in an ice bath. Remove them from the ice bath and make sure you pat them very dry and then transfer them to sheet pans in an even layer and freeze them like that. That way they can freeze individually and not in a bag and get all clumped together. So once they're frozen, you can transfer them to a zip top bag, suck out the air or vacuum seal if you can, and that's it. Keep them in your freezer for up to six months and you can pull them out and use them all winter long. These are just my top five suggestions on what to do with your harvest, but really the possibilities are endless. You can bake up zucchini bread, muffins, you can stuff them, you can make zucchini cakes, you can toss them into sautés, into other soups, Really, you can do so much with zucchini because it's such a versatile vegetable. You have absolutely no excuses not to use up every single piece that you harvest. I hope this video gave you some great tips on what to do with all of the zucchini and squash you're growing in your garden. Please leave us a comment and let us know how you liked the video. And of course, tell us which fruits and vegetables you'd like to see featured in future videos. On behalf of Gary and myself, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.